Tesla stock recently has been on a tear, and it's been very good if you're in Tesla. If you own Tesla, you have been rewarded favorably for buying the stock over the last couple of months. Well, if you are short in Tesla, quite the opposite. You are getting blown out of your short positions. Now, with this in mind, with the positive catalyst that we have already heard and known about in mind, where does Tesla rally from here? How high could Tesla go? What are some short-term potential negative catalysts for Tesla? As well as the long-term catalyst, the next six-month-plus catalyst for Tesla. I think you're going to like what's in this video. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date with everything Tesla as well as the broad markets on a day-by-day basis now the reason that tesla has been rallying so hard as of recently you could boil this down to a couple key catalysts number one it looks like those demand concerns that we've seen in january of 2023 so a couple short months ago are gone tesla has not cut prices in a while some of the delivery numbers you're getting out of china for the month of may indicating tesla sold more evs in china then Liotto, Neo, and Xpeng combined, not really getting those demand concerns anymore. On top of that, another big drag to Tesla's stock performance in 2022 was the fact that Elon bought Twitter, and people think that he spent too much time at Twitter and wasn't focused on Tesla as much. Well, he's still gonna be there. I mean, he spent $44 billion on Twitter, but he's no longer the CEO and there is someone else in charge. And this has been a very positive thing for Tesla's share price. Now, arguably the biggest catalyst that has happened recently, and this just happened on Thursday, GM officially capitulated and said they're not even going to try to compete with the Tesla charging ecosystem, that they're going to leave that to Tesla. They're going to partner and Tesla is going to let GM owners charge at their superchargers. This is going to be a long-term, almost service-like revenue for Tesla for a very long time. So a lot of Tesla's long-term uncertainty just went away based off of this one partnership, and really you could group forward in this as well, alone. Because, I mean, that's almost like free advertisement as well, if you think about it. I mean... Why would you buy a GM or Ford vehicle if you're charging at a Tesla supercharger? I, I mean, there's so many reasons to be bullish on that, but there's one just to point it out. These positive catalysts has caused Tesla stock to be green 11 days in a row. Tesla has not done this since January of 2021 when Tesla stock went absolutely parabolic. This move recently in 2023 has caused short sellers to lose $6.08 in the last 11 days, not to mention the billions that they were down on shorting Tesla stock before this. So you're well in excess of $10 billion in losses in Tesla stock, and I think that is a near-term catalyst that will push Tesla higher. There is 23 and a half billion in tesla short positions right now that's very sizable and considering the bullishness that tesla is already experiencing from these catalysts that i previously mentioned these shorts covering is going to have a much greater impact than it otherwise would have if things were negative for tesla this buying pressure is no longer being met or this potential buying pressure from, sh from shorts covering is no longer being met by massive shorting of Tesla. And when you really break down the charts in which we'll do in one second, I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense to go short on Tesla here as well, even after the rally that you have seen, considering some of the other names out there look much, much more overvalued for an example apple stock has a current 12 month forward peg ratio of 2.42 tesla's 
forward looking peg ratio is 1.28. Now, what a peg ratio is, is an price to earnings ratio divided by the growth rate. So an Apple's PE is around 28, but their earnings growth is about 10%, whereas Tesla's PE is around 49. So Tesla's actually more expensive of a company, but Tesla's growth rate is around the high 30s to low 40% growth rate over the last year. So which one's actually cheaper? Well, Tesla is almost two times cheaper than Apple, even albeit the P.E. ratio is currently higher. That's because you're expecting more growth from Tesla in the future. So that means that eventually, right, 12, 24 months from now, if you buy Tesla right here, well, Tesla's earnings are going to grow. So really what you're paying for Tesla in the future is going to be a lot less than what you're paying for something like an Apple today. So you still have a valuation argument to be had here that Tesla's valuation, pretty cheap compared to other names. And I think that does keep short sellers at bay. And I think that will help continue this rally with Tesla stock, especially, again, as shorts go to cover on those short positions. Now, another near-term catalyst with Tesla is going to be their delivery numbers. Now, if you take a look at this chart, Tesla deliveries in Q2 always tend to be the weakest. They always are. Now, what you've seen from some of the preliminary data, like I mentioned earlier in this video, the May Tesla sales in China alone were 77,000 vehicles, a little bit over 77,000 vehicles. And that was only China. Imagine three months of these, these sales. I mean, what? Call it 150,000 vehicles. You consider America... I mean, Europe, the rest of the world, you're going to be pushing, again, another record for Tesla's Q2 deliveries. Last Q2 in 2022, Tesla delivered 254,000 vehicles. I would argue this time around it's going to be closer to 350. Wall Street is expecting a little bit over 300,000. So I do think once you get those delivery numbers, that's another positive catalyst for Tesla stock and when you're expecting to get these numbers likely to be on July 2nd Tesla tends to report their delivery numbers two months or two days into a new month after the quarter ends so if the quarter technically ended on you know if it's if it's going to be uh you know June 31st then it's going to be Two days after that, Tesla typically lets out their numbers on the second day of the month. And that's going to potentially be a very big catalyst for Tesla. And I think that does send the stock much higher. So I think in the short term, in combination with a somewhat cheaper valuation than some of your large tech names that are trading towards their all-time highs, Apple, Microsoft, nvidia so on and so forth there is room for the valuation to expand from here especially if fundamentally numbers come in better than expectations after all coming july 2nd if we're expecting a little bit over three hundred thousand vehicles to be delivered if tesla blows that up and is much better than expectations call it three hundred fifty thousand, four hundred thousand vehicles uh the stock is going to go much higher from here. That's not even a, a question. But really what's going to happen from now until July 2nd, I think, is a very big question. And I do think you can trade sideways for a couple days. I think uh, maybe a week or two. You definitely could trade sideways. Things such as the RSI, that is at almost 86. An overbought RSI is anything above 70. So right here i mean you are trading historically strong with tesla 
So I would actually welcome sideways trading action to get the RSI to come down a little bit to give you that next leg higher. And that next leg higher could obviously be much larger. But from where I see it right now, I just don't see any negative catalyst over the short term here besides the Fed meeting next week potentially could be negative besides the inflation data next week could be negative. And we'll talk about that more in the longer term uh, thesis of, of Tesla. And this could obviously cause problems for the EV sector, for the auto sector in general. But from now until July 2nd, minus big data releases, I don't really see anything negative for Tesla besides, I mean, the positives. Shorts, massively down on short positions. I think they will have to cover relatively soon, especially if Tesla really starts to break and hold above 250. 250 is a big psychological level, and I think you get more inflows, dramatically more inflows to Tesla after you break that level to the upside. And when you look at this chart, just on an overall basis, I mean, you're still trading at the levels you were in 2021. I mean, you're you're really not even close to those all-time highs still. You'd still have to rally almost 70% to get back to those all-time highs. Now, you're also above a longer-term downtrend. Now, this longer-term downtrend, you broke that uh, two days ago, actually. And you basically gapped up above that. Another very strong sign Tesla has more room to run here. And I think really in the short term, you're going to see more bullish positioning in Tesla. You're going to see some shorts starting to cover. And I think that does from now until July 2nd, drive Tesla stock to about $300 per share. That's my personal opinion based off of the news that we have gotten, shorts covering and more bullish positioning. That would be a rally from here of about 22%. Now, after July 2nd, if deliveries come in much better than expectations, that's where I could easily see Tesla around $350 per share shortly after that. And that would be a rally from this level of about 43%. So that's kind of what I'm, ex what I'm expecting here in the short term. Now, in the longer term, I think there is some things to also consider. Now, I think in the long term, things get a little more difficult, but a lot easier to see because we all know Tesla is going to do well years to come. But really, right now, the next six to 12 months, that's where things get a little bit more difficult because there's an argument to be had that's a very valid one that we're going into a recession, that the consumer is going to slow down and quite a bit. And although I'm very bullish on Tesla long term, I do think the end of July to August, people are going to realize they have a lot less discretionary income than they previously thought because they have to start, start paying back federal student loans. And a lot of your student loans held by the government, those payments are $250 to $550 a month. That's a pretty decent chunk of change that people have been saving the last couple of years. And I do think that will dramatically, I think it will have a much bigger impact to the economy and to growth and to spending than what analysts currently forecast. Now, does that negatively affect affordability for Teslas? Well, yeah. But at the same time, if you go into a recession, the Fed's going to cut rates and that helps affordability for Teslas. So it's very uncertain, in my personal opinion, how these things are going to play out. I think you can still expect obvious growth here and throughout the rest of 2023 and 2024. I don't think longer term, this is an issue at all. But six to 12 months down the line, it's harder to forecast. Now for this year in 2023, you're expecting about 1.8 to 2 million, 1.8 million to 2 million vehicles to be delivered by Tesla. Now, Tesla's probably going to come in at the higher end range. They might beat the higher end range. They might come in more than 2 million vehicles. And that's going to be a very positive for Tesla. Now, obviously, but 
I think one of the biggest catalysts that Tesla has over the next 6 to 12 months is going to be the Cybertruck. Now, the Cybertruck alone has about 1.5 million pre-orders. So it's not like they have to sell these vehicles. They've, they've already been sold. They're waiting to deliver these vehicles and collect the rest of the revenue besides just the pre-orders. Now, let me tell you, people either love or hate the Cybertruck. But we know one thing for sure. This is going to cause a lot of attention to go to Tesla. And this is going to be like free advertising. Every time a Cybertruck is out on the road, it's going to get all eyes on it. At least until you start to see them around a lot more. Now, advertising. That's a funny word. Because... I think this is where a lot of people have it wrong with Tesla. As of recently, I've got dramatically more bullish on Tesla. And that is because I try to look at Tesla on a 3D kind of picture frame. Tesla has not advertised before. They've never allocated a single dollar to advertising. Elon has been great advertising. Just from what he says and, and does, he's gotten media coverage. But... By and large, people don't know what Teslas are. They don't know that Teslas are some of the safest vehicles you can drive. I mean, they just, they, they don't know that. That's not talked about very often. They don't know how fun they are to drive, how fast and how much power they have. People don't understand the technology that Teslas have or the fact that Teslas are cheaper than the average car that Americans are buying today. These things are selling points or would be selling points for a lot of people to buy Teslas instead, but they simply don't know about them. And Elon at the shareholder meeting said that they would start to advertise and the crowd went crazy. And I think Elon got the hint. And a matter of fact, he said he did on CNBC later after that shareholder meeting that they would they would start to advertise. And I think that's where you're going to see Tesla's order book double or triple. And even analysts don't expect that to happen. You're expecting, call it 2 million vehicles for 2023. You're expecting a little bit less, and, and these are delivery numbers, right? 2 million vehicles for 2023. You're expecting a little bit less than 3 million deliveries in 2024, Later on, you're expecting a little over 4 million vehicle deliveries in 2025, and for that to ramp up exponentially after that. I think you could easily, if Tesla were to start advertising in the, in the next three months, and Tesla's production can handle it, granted, if they can get some factories up and running, uh, you know, even potentially buy some other, manu you know, facilities or, or whatnot, do do some things to get production higher than their current rate of production, about 500 uh, to 600,000 vehicles a month. Tesla could end up delivering by 2024 or 2025 double the current expectations if their production can get up to that, meaning that they will have demand to deliver double the current analyst expectation. They could be growing hundreds of percents a year. Once they start to advertise. And if you think you have seen anything from Tesla stock before, just wait until that happens. And that's the thing that I am most bullish about in the long term. Now, obviously, recent catalysts have also been very bullish, like their partnerships with Ford and GM. That's something that's going to add billions and billions to revenue for years to come and buying tesla now is like buying the pickaxe and shovel industry of the gold rush or buying nvidia in the ai gold rush i mean they are like the pickaxe and shovels and now tesla is to the ev charging network and after all once you sell all these electric vehicles people are going to have to charge them so for a lot of different catalysts i'm very bullish on tesla in the near term for specific reasons and i'm long term on tesla or bullish in the long term on Tesla for other specific reasons as well. Now, Tesla's share price long term, I'm more in alignment with what Kathy Wood thinks. Uh, you know, 2000, 2700 by 2027 looks pretty probable to me, but it could go higher than that. 
depending on their order book and how many vehicles they are able to sell, as well as how the taxi network does evolve over time if that starts to become a reality or tesla robots or tesla solar which not to mention solar is expected to grow over 100 percent in 2023 there's a lot of good things going for tesla and you could easily slap a 2500 hundred dollar price target on the stock by 2027 if not excess to three or four thousand and we'll break down some of the actual fundamentals in a, the another video i'll say the next video but we'll see. So if you guys want to see that next video and stay up to date with everything going on with Tesla as well as the broad market, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you have comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.